To complete Unit 3, we have to look at nationalization and privatization. We'll start with some definitions and examine the advantages and disadvantages of each. The definition of nationalization as provided by Merriam-Webster is a process of transforming private assets into public assets by bringing them under the public ownership of a national government or state. An example would be the government taking control of an industry such as oil, steel, rail, banking, or air. In the 1970s, the British government nationalized British Airlines into British Airways. The advantages include that the government may be able to lower costs by assuming control of the industry. By being the sole owner, the government may be able to exploit economies of scale and production that may otherwise be unachievable. Secondly, the companies could be run to achieve a social purpose and serve society in some way as opposed to focusing on maximizing profit. By operating for the benefit of society, less pressure may exist on earning profits. Thirdly, the government can assume control of key resources and industries of a country. In China, the government exerts control over the largest banks in the country. However, this allows them to manipulate the financial sector in a way that could benefit the economy. How well they do that is debatable, but that is a topic for another day. On the disadvantaged side, government firms do not face competition and therefore lack an incentive to cut costs. Although they are accountable to the taxpayer, taxpayer the consequences are not the same as for private firms and competitive industries. The lack of competition could result in less innovation and development emerging from nationalized industries. With little pressure from competition, what need is there to develop new products and respond to changing consumer needs? Additionally, the quality of government-provided goods and services may not be as high as those provided by a competitive private sector. The quantity of goods available may also be restricted, resulting in a reduction of choice for consumers. If you're not sure of this, you're welcome to research North Korea's smartphone. Finally, in democratic countries where political parties can be in power for a few years or less, industries may be subject to short-termism. As political power changes hands, the direction of nationalized industries may also change. Privatization is defined as the transfer of ownership, property, or business from the government to the private sector. In the late 80s, the UK government then privatized British Airways and floated the stock on the London Stock Exchange, where private individuals and institutions could purchase shares and ownership in the company. As for the advantages of privatization, com competition amongst private businesses can lead to a reduction in cost. To maintain profit margins, companies will seek to reduce their operating costs. Additionally, as was the case with British Airways, once a nationalized industry is privatized, private individuals and institutions are able to take part ownership. This allows them to share in the profits generated by these firms. The, com the competitive landscape for private firms could also give rise to an increase in the quantity and quality of products available. Private firms will release new products to keep and gain customers, and in doing so may increase the quality of output to gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace. There is one-off benefit to the government of the revenue generated from the sale of nationalized assets. However, in the future, the government will no longer generate revenue from those assets. Another disadvantage would be the possibility of a private firm obtaining monopoly power. Without government regulation, the firm could exploit consumers. Finally, by focusing on profit maximizing, firms may have little incentive to serve social objectives. Their primary concern will be in generating profit with less focus on overall social welfare. All right, this wraps up Unit 3. We're getting through the AS, and we've finished the microeconomic portion of this course. We'll next move on to Unit 4 in the macroeconomy. As we progress, be sure to leave your comments and questions below. I use your feedback to better understand how I'm doing and where to go next. If you have any suggestions, please email me at enhancedtuition at gmail.com or tweet me at enhancedtuition. Also, I'm developing a Facebook group for students, which I will share more about soon. As for now, keep studying, and I will see you in the next one.